Do it again. Yuri! It's, it's oh, nice. Exclamation point. <laughs> yeah. You have to say it. You have yeah. to say it. <laughs> you have to be excited. <laughs> it has the exclamation point. You have mm -hmm. to be excited. It's got three of them. Well, okay. I feel like that wasn't three exclamation points, Bear. You have to Yuri! Can you guys stop? <laughs> Yuri uh, are we, on are we, ice! Are we back? We're back. Yes, we are back. Uh, uh -huh. Do you make... know it has three exclamation points, Matt? This so you have to say it with that emphasis. Hang on, I'm kicking. I'm, 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 I'm kicking Scott out of chat. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna unmod him and and time him out for the rest of the night. Scott, you're <laughs> muted. I can't hear a word you're saying. I'm not even in chat anymore. I, I see your name. I can see it right there. Oh no, I, I typed like a minute ago, but mm. I'm not doing anything. I'm actually back on. Yeah, chat delay. Can I share my chat. screen with you, Mathis. Nope. No, nope. I'm gonna punish you like a bad boy. That's the oh, kind of really? that's the kind of really that's the kind of campaign you want to run. Apparently, I'm just you're saying. Rolling you're rolling with disadvantage now. <laughs> you know? Power struggle. What a nerd. Uh. <laughs> All right, uh, we're back. Sexy Scott wants to bang the party. Let's continue. Whoa, whoa. Hey man, you're whoa. controlling the Fey. Oh, whoa. whoa. Just Addo, apparently. <laughs> uh -huh. So yeah, weirdly you want to murder the only the hot girl in the party, and you want to bang the like weird Hobbit creature. Listen, okay, I'm just trying to fulfill my. No, the um, weird. The, no, the hot chick wants to, you know. No, he wants to kill the hot chick. He's trying to kill Rye. He's yeah, jealous. Rye. Oh, yeah, but maybe she's not. Chick. Maybe she doesn't swing that way. Guys, we all know yeah. Rye is just casting a spell to cover up. Like, how do you think she so easily looks like Sam? Or, or Smith, sorry. How do you think she so easily did Sam that? Smith, whatever. She does not actually look like that. She looks horrible. She uses magic to try to cover Wait, are you implying that Rai costs minor illusion every minute of her entire life, all the time, <laughs> to look like someone else? Sam, why are you trying to, why are you pretending? We all know that the, the amulet and the pendant combine to act as a powerful magic item to change your facade. Oh, snap. Yeah. Oh, snap. You don't know. It's just a facade. You don't, know, you don't know what she's been through, all right? All right, Scott, what the hell am I rolling? Parents. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Adam. Can you do anything to try to give him penalties on his role? Uh, anything we could do? Anything no. we do to make his life miserable? I will. Right, I so will. Probably, I will, without remorse, enough? slit your throat There's while you sleep. Probably. How long am I for? It's friends. It's, it's not over, really. Oh, it's over for you and your mad at Adam now. Yeah, he did it to you. You realize he did it. Yeah, but but <laughs> what Adam can do. Wait, I know that Otto did it? Yeah, friends ends and you Again? know what happened. Yeah. <gasps> oh, no. Gromit is going <laughs> to take him off his back, put him down, and be like, you said, you know, do that again. He's tied up. That's not fair. <laughs> good, Dramatic. good. You can't, you can't punish him while he's tied up. All right. So what I need from you, Mathis. Oh, God. Oh, I have so many hopes, so many dreams. Yeah, well, it'll probably win because I don't have very many good saves outside of, like, wisdom. And what do you think the save is, Mathis? Charisma, maybe? No, it's a wisdom save. It's a it's Sweet. an enchantment spell. It's a wisdom save. All right. Well, let's hope I don't roll like absolute trash. Uh, roll like trash. One, 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 one. Moment the truth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is not possible. This is not possible. What'd you get for chanting possible. for a fail? Oh, that crit. That's karma, <laughs> baby. I call oh, shenanigans. No. I call shenanigans. <laughs> Why does everybody want to ruin my fun? Oh. You got your fun <laughs> with Bear. All right, go ahead. What happened, Scott? That was a practice roll. No, yeah, uh-huh. Uh -huh. You don't find her that attractive. Good. Can I stab her? That's what happens. No. So, obviously, <laughs> she is um, just like... Uh, oozing with, with just like pheromones and allure. And as she comes closer to you and tosses that ever so slight wry smile at you, you can literally feel the energies of, of, uh, of every part of her essence. She's a creature that was born of magic, yeah. uh, timeless in age. You can feel all of this power rushing over you. The problem is she doesn't tap into her power from this, from this uh, holy place of happiness and, and kindness, something that might actually be able to overpower Thump, no. The kind of power that she comes at Funk with is this like dark and sinister power. It's just like this power of control, this power of, uh, of just like overbearing. But Funk lives every moment of his life feeling the power of dark energies, uh, trying to control his every moment, his, his every movement. But Funk embraces that. He holds it dear to his heart. So when this 
Peon, oh, this ancient creature, tries to uh, take over Thonk's mind, take over Thonk's heart. No. His mind and his heart are nowhere near where she can touch. Thonk easily ignores these powers. Sure, she's good looking, but, you know, Thonk got 99 problems, but, oh, yeah, anyways. <laughs> it fails, Thonk. It fails. I have Luckily, never seen Thonk bat an eye at another creature. Mm. No, I don't. <laughs> this is this very is thematically I appropriate. Thonk is like asexual. At that's, why, <laughs> that's, why, that's why Scott was so excited. He was like, this is the one time he might get the opportunity and then crit. No. Yeah, I was just like, I imagine the save was like ridiculous. Fall in love with her. No. Mm. It must have been a ridiculous a save. Chance, we have a better chance, Maggie, of course, referring to the other one, with a B1 battle droid falling in love than we do freaking thunk. God, <laughs> so yeah, if Grauman didn't feel sense danger, he'd be sensing something else. <laughs> oh, Grauman has needs. Oh, yeah, that's <laughs> true. Yes. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. Because I, I imagine the save was super high. She's like crazy. So uh, crazy powerful, I'm assuming. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not happy. Good. So I'm going to let her approach me. I'm not going to make a move, but once she's in range, I'm going to break. I'm not going to like fawn, but I'm not going to like give away that anything has happened. And when she gets close enough, I'm going to stab her. I'm going to try and stab her. Sure. You go right ahead. You want me to roll? Mm, well, so she, so this is actually how it's going to play out. She continues walking closer and closer and closer. And she tosses that wry smile at you. She stands, uh, she hangs back a little bit because she feels her magic's not, um, uh, she can see you're not yeah. reacting to her spell. So she does hang back a little bit. Um, and uh, she says, oh, no, uh, actually, scratch that. She says nothing. Um, instead, she's going to start turning her eyes over to Grauman. No. Uh, Grauman, however, is still a good distance from her. Grauman knew to keep his distance. Some, you know, impulse in him told him to do so. It's actually Grauman's turn next. Oh, okay. Grauman, what would you like to do? Oh, I can't believe you ruined everything. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> ruined everything. Uh, Grauman is going to... Talking uh, is a free action, right? Talking well, is a free action, yes. Uh, Grauman put... Grauman put Otto down and is, is currently yelling at Otto for casting friends on him. Yeah, that's happening. Yeah, so okay. I don't know if you caught sure. that part. Fair enough. Otto, what is your response to this? Just standing there smiling like an idiot. <laughs> He's tied up, so Grauman doesn't care. Grauman is going to do his signature, drag the axe on the floor, and... Uh, Rush out the woman? Oh, yeah. God. Oh, his God. Thought. No, I... One flaw is that he's always, he always answers problems with, with, you know... Good God, I want to say, no, Grauman, don't! Okay, awesome. Grauman, thank, you, thank you, Grauman. You drag your axe on the floor. No, because then you, I can't... You, you oh, go, fuck! You go rushing at the guy, at the girl, and you go swinging your axe. But as you get closer, and you see her in finer detail, you see the detail is in, is in fact quite fine. Romeo will say. Oh, good God. Please okay. roll 20. Please roll 20. Because I don't want to. I can't fight you. I can't fight you. I lose. What am I casting? Wisdom oh, save. Wisdom save. Sorry. Oh, I, I, I'm old school. Oh, man. Sorry. It's just. I'm trying to. Yeah, a real strong save. I bet you got in wisdom. Dude, I have a negative one. Yep. Yeah. Oh, use your inspiration. Oh, yeah, you got inspiration. You... Use your inspiration. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Use it. Okay. Well, I cast it, and then I can use my inspiration. I can use my inspiration, right? Yeah, so you roll with advantage. <sighs> oh, okay. I'll roll with advantage because negative one is scurry. I'm, I'm doing that. Oh, God. Come on. Uh, please don't double fail. Three, I'm so scared. Two, one. Here we go. No! Yes! no. I've got Grommet! Grommet is just such a sexual beast. It's so easy to overtake him. <laughs> oh, God. Oh no! Oh, no! I let that sink in. I just not saw what I rolled. No. Oh. I don't even have my hand connected to me. <laughs> Rye, come back. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> Take it in. Take it in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, now I'll give you a shorter version because you already heard this earlier when I described it to Adol. But in short. Um, Every part, every fiber of your being, everything that you, okay. you, you uh, have, your heart, your mind, everything, you know for a fact 
that this woman here, whether or not Grom is actually interested in woman doesn't, women doesn't matter. This woman here uh, is is the person for you. This woman here is, it, 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 she knows your soul. She always has and always will know your soul. And you know hers. You know that you want nothing but to, to make her feel every moment the way that she makes you feel. And you've never felt anything like this ever. And even in your fondest dreams, never felt anything like the way that you do now. Um, and you know that you that nothing would make her happier um, than spreading that love because she has so much to share. And, and you love those that you travel with. You love Otto. And you want Otto to feel that. And you're kind of looking at him. And you, feel that love. and you look at Thonk and you're like, I want Thonk to feel this love too. And you look at Thonk and... I hate you, Scott. Thonk I already rolled a 20. I'm immune. Thonk doesn't feel no love. So, so you want nothing but more than to share this love with your friends. If you can't share it with them, well, then you know it's going to depress her to... So just look at people that can't love her, that that maybe even hate her. Okay. And maybe you can convince Thunk, or maybe you can deal with him. Okay. So uh, Grauman is Grauman like looks at her, like he's he's running like full speed in with his initial like you know attack like he normally does. He starts lifting up his axe, jumps in the air, drops the axe, drops on the floor, like puts his hands down like he's like kind of bowing to her and looks up and he's just like, you, so pretty. <laughs> and then he turns around and I, I guess I don't have, well, I can still move, right? I can still have move actions. He's gonna go turn around and he's gonna go over to uh, to Otto and start, start preparing to untie him. So you rush up to him and turn around and head back to Otto. Like, Okay, perfect. Thank you, uh, Maggie. Um, technically, it's Otto's turn, but you are—we are either smiling, <laughs> you're smiling this whole time. We already talked about that. Going down to Thunk now. Uh, fuck me, man. Um, I gotta go. I gotta run. I can't fight Gramen, and I Otto only needs to get a spell off from me. Uh, I'm going to take off. I'm just gonna—I'm gonna leave. See you later. All right. I could try and stab her, but like I don't know how fucking powerful they are. <laughs> just... Oh, Scott takes a moment to. He's just like, yes, go on. How powerful am I? You you know where I was going, right? Yeah, I know where you're going. That's why I'm gonna go to you. All right, my goal is just run out of the cave and scoop up the loot on my way. Everything else can stay on the on there. I'm gonna scoop up the loot though. So it's really, you're just kind of stopping for a second to grab the- It's like a run by, like a run by and try and get the- In the dagger and they're pretty much happy with that. Yep. And I'm heading into that's, where- That's all I brought, but I didn't bring his clothes or anything. Okay, that's, yeah. that's all I'm grabbing, I'm out. Okay. And so- Thank you for untying Otto and giving me time. <laughs> I'm okay. out. And the, you go rushing back to, to Otto. Uh, time's gonna pass. Sure. So Otto unties, there's a few moments. Uh, so Grom and Otto have, this shared joy, and they can see in each other's eyes. They can feel it. Ramen's like smiling and untying Otto, and he's like, I'm gonna let you go. Yeah, so we can love Thunk. Everyone needs the love. Everyone does. Everyone. Everyone. God, can we just <laughs> say everyone to each other for five minutes? Yeah, we do. As we're we just say everyone. <laughs> Right, you make your way all the way to the castle. You're rushing through the castle as fast as you can. You go running down, you run down the hallway, down the stairs, looping four steps at a time. You rush up to the thing, maybe hit the wall a little too hard, grab the scones, and you pull it. Yes, I pulled the scones. All of my companions back at the cable, see the door open. This is amazing, I finally did it. You solved the puzzle. And about 10 seconds later, Thunk comes in behind you. <laughs> Equally out of breath. What? I, I tossed I toss the loot to the ground in like a fit of rage and I throw the dagger. I don't care where like I just hurl it. I don't even care. It's somewhere around. Not right. Not right. It's no, no, not right. Like just off in the distance. And I like <laughs> I'm gripping my spear, I'm taking a deep breath. I'm like What's uh, She has goddamn Gromin. Who's she? The Fay. Oh shit. <laughs> I don't suppose you saw the trap door, though. 
I no. want to poke it. I just, I shake my head. What I have the... half a mind to just leave them there. He just takes, like, he, like, starts pacing. Uh, you, like, visible rage. Like, he's just not, he's losing control of himself. Everyone. <laughs> Everyone. Right, 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 right. <laughs> he's like, well, give me, give me one second. And then, literally, in the same spot, in the same situation, she, you can see her, and she just looks at the floor, and she goes, Did you know this was going to happen? <laughs> oh, Answer <no>. me. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yes, everyone. Don't go quite now at my expense. <laughs> if I kick it, honestly, what you're trying to plan out is not going to work. No responses. All right, then I'll just, I'll just jump off the roof. <laughs> is that what you want? <laughs> no responses. All right, let's do it. <laughs> Come on, Thug. You have no idea what I'm talking about. Nope, I have no idea, and I'm not questioning. I'm telling you to I'm follow me to the roof. Yep, I'm, fo go yep. the roof. I'm following. Because if this is all going to hell, and you're saying you're going to jump off the roof, at least I get to see somebody die before I go. So <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, my God. For all of these months. <laughs> it's, I'm They're joking. So that is so tough. Raya's climbing the stairs, and she has, like, and she she's, a, she's got legit determination in her mind. She wants this thing to like, feel her mind being like, I'm gonna fucking jump off the roof. You're messing me around. So as she climbs the stairs and climbs the stairs and climbs the stairs and climbs the stairs and climbs the stairs to the top of the tower and she lifts up the hatch, she kind of like is taking in the moments of the air outside and breathing it deep. And she's kind of like pacing around, still probably toying with the idea in her mind, whatever the case may be. She goes to an edge and she's standing on the edge of the parapets and, and like it kind of maybe, grabs hold of the taller two and stands up on the lower one and is kind of like looking down and looking around and, you know, kind of taking it in. She's, I don't know whether or not she's bluffing, but she's certainly playing the part right now. And as you stand there and watching, um, she's looking across the, uh, the the castle, across the area, across the ground and everything. Excuse me. Um, and she's thinking of all the different places that have been uh, searched thus far. <clears throat> Thonk go goes with her as well. And, um, but she's sorry, she's uh, uh, inside this place and she's like, I, I've got nothing. Do you say anything there, Rai? Um, I, no. I'm like, this whole time I've said nothing, I just beeline for the edge. I'm just yeah. standing there. And I, in my mind, I'm thinking like, you just, you mind, you, good job wasting my time. Yeah. So uh, as Thong kind of goes up and walks over to an adjacent parapet, uh, probably finding like, just like a good spot. So like, where can I watch your squish? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking around as well, and Thonk is far more perceptive than anybody else in the party, and so is totally wasting his talents standing there and watching Otto tied up and helpless. Um, <laughs> And he's looking around and he's thinking of everything that he saw as he walked or ran through the castle. And he looks over and he sees the other two towers on the other side of the, wait, there's another two towers that are outside. If the basement, first basement that you guys found was at the bottom of this one tower, and there are two more towers that are outside, have accesses to them from the outside, um, are over there and their doors were not left open or destroyed the way Grami did the rest of them. Perhaps there's basements at the bottom of the other towers as well. That's something that very quickly thought comes to the realization of with his extremely high perception, extremely high uh, investigation, and extremely high wisdom. All right. I watch Rai. Oh, oh, God! GM's, GM's way to try to save Rai and fail. Well, I, don't know, I'm, I'm, I want to see if Rai's bluffing. I'm curious what the hell's going on. She's yelling at herself and she's... Maybe I'm just with a schizophrenic. Who fucking knows? Let's find out. Rai's standing on the edge, and, like, her cape is, like, billowing in the wind, and she just waits there for, like, like 20, 30, 40 seconds. Okay. She's, After... she's, just, she's just looking at the ground. I, I, it, takes a, it takes a minute. I, like, I, I'll give you the minute. And, then, like, I'm just leaning up against the wall. So what's okay. your decision? Are you going to give up? Or are you going to kill those who stopped you? situation thought this is something else entirely um if you appreciate it i'm gonna jump now so i just need you to watch okay what happens when you jump you're gonna die yeah that's right and what point i'm are... gonna die <laughs> i'm gonna jump and i'm gonna die 
as she yells. <laughs> you just see me looking around, <laughs> but there's no one else around. <laughs> so as Rai is like looking around and doing these shouts and, and honestly thinking that she's just a psychopath, uh, Thonk is kind of like maybe. Maybe she, she is crazy. You know, I wish this was under different circumstances, but screw it. I'm going to enjoy it all the same. And, and Rai is kind of like grabbing each sides of each pair of puts and maybe inching even closer to the yeah, other. I'm like, I'm like leaning out with but holding on still. And it's cut and pan the scene over to the other two, which have been going back, everybody back and forth for a little while. Everybody. Everyone. Eventually, everyone. Every, every single one. Everyone. As I untie the last piece of the row. <laughs> and I help, I help Otto up and I'm like, yes, everyone. And we hold hands and skip out. Mm -hmm. So she actually walks over to the two of you and places one hand on either of your cheeks. She says like a quick little stroke of your cheeks. And she says, tell me everything about yourselves. Tell me, what is it that you can do? What is it you can't do? It just more or less has you divulge information to her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I happily divulge. Yeah, I'm like, I tell her all the things. I tell I tell her all the stories about Grauman because I'm so infatuated with Grauman <laughs> simultaneously. Oh, yeah, and I then Grauman her. tells all the things about Addo. Because <laughs> Grauman is also super infatuated with Addo. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little cute, he's so cute. Um, and, and so she just starts like gathering all this information from the two of you. Um, and this is, takes a bunch of time, paying the camera back over to uh, I will position myself close enough to... Actually, no, I know what I'm going to do. So I'm assuming you just keep edging forward. Does it mm -hmm. become apparent that you don't do it? Like you don't, you're not going to do it? Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, to, to are same, you, are you the same person, it looks like I'm just trying to like <laughs> go with some other situation. I'm not actually going to jump. So I'm going to get behind you at some point. And the plan here is you to just that. do like... Like grab, grab her, grab her cloak, but do like a shove forward and pull back, like a uh, do it and then pull you back. You know what I mean? Like I'm pushing you, but then I pull you back. Thanks for explaining it. Four so times. you're pushing four her four times and then pull her back. Then and then I'm push her and I'm pull okay. her back. You so know, what's happening I'm, after you push her? I'm gonna pull her back. Oh, but first right. I gotta yeah. push her. Right. And then I gotta pull, then her back. pull her. Right. Yeah. By the cloak. Okay. Got so it. you unfasten the cloak and then push. Her. <laughs> No. <laughs> and then you pull the cloak back. And I pull yeah. the cloak back. And I oh, keep Ryan. the cloak. And I keep yeah. the cloak and I leave. <laughs> okay, okay. It's like you saw Doctor Strange. You know how it's going to play out. You yeah. want the cloak. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. You got it. Yeah, yeah. okay. So um, you push her forward. <laughs> um, then pull her back. And then pull okay, her back. Yeah, but, well, yeah. Before you pull it back, before you pull it back, oh. Rye, do you, or, or, or Sam, does Rye have any um, uh, any cuss words or, or <laughs> that would be saved for this particular moment of push forward. There is a back. Oh, there you're a, a reaction. There is a you time. And knock thonk back. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it's like a it's like a heart skips a beat scenario, and there's just like they, there's just like no words come out. It's just like a, <gasps> like one of those kind of things. Yep. There is there's no exp there's no words. Just I wasn't gonna jump. And now <laughs> it looks like I'm falling. <laughs> So um, she gets shoved forward, and um, and she's going to fall, and then thunk. Yeah, and then I, like I said, I, I rip her back. So I, I want to be sure. I want to be sure. Yeah, I want and like I'm assuming Rai is off balance, and I like I, I basically want her to fall on her ass and on her back. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm just gonna stand over her and be like, "You're a coward. Come on." Oh snap! He's like, I just have to, you know, get in a little hateful comment there. <laughs> Rai's just kind of like she couldn't believe that he like tried to push her but also <laughs> that like arguably he is horribly misreading the situation and she can't really explain the truth <laughs> so she just kind of gets up she's like All right, whatever <laughs> and just follows Thonk so I imagine Thonk makes his way over to the trap door yeah I'm gonna yeah. go to and waits a few moments or whatever yeah I'm waiting back over to the others okay? uh, while they finish resolving that Eventually, she's kind of, as you guys finish divulging your information to the two of you, to, to, to her, she walks out and of then, the And then tell her the story. Oh, yeah. Tell her the story of the Oh, dragon. wait, wait. No, don't leave yet. Oh, there's another great story. Oh, my goodness. You, the, the, the time on the, on the plot loves. maiden. Follow me and continue talking. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and uh, wow. Okay. So 
Captain Helm, right? He he was steering us, and and uh, a storm, big storm, huge, and it just goes on and on and on and on. Yep. And as you're walking out there, she's like, of course. And she turns over to Grauman, and she, uh, uh, like, leaning very close into Grauman, reaches into Grauman's pocket or pouch or whatever, and uh, pulls out the partially whittled um, seagull. And she um, holds it up and says, um, Grauman, my love, this is crafted so beautifully. I, I love it. Grauman's like, you love it? I do. It is it is a remarkable mm-hmm. seagull. I can I can see its its beautiful form. Great seagull, Grauman. You can have it. Mind you, it's literally still a hunk of wood with like <laughs> two chunks carved out of it. And, and she's like, okay, "That's a wing forming, okay?" Oh, yep. <laughs> All right. So so, so and, and she's like, um, she's like, the, "Do you choose to put the seagull in the wood, or does the wood tell you the seagull was already there?" Grauman's mind is fucking blown. <laughs> and with that, she leans in and she whispers to Grauman and says, um, speak to them, call them to you. And we're gonna pan the camera back over as okay. Grauman begins the ritual. And um, and go to the other two. Where are you going? I'm leading him to one of the towers. Okay. So you guys go walking down the stairs. You're not like running anymore or anything like right. that. You're walking down the stairs again, it takes a few moments. If you go down, lead your way over, you lead him out of the gates and then into the foyer where, again, I, I, um, I did repeatedly, I want to check everything indoors so fucking thoroughly. <laughs> Knock down everything, flipped everything out, so on and so forth. But I'm going to check the entire inside of the castle. So now you're outside the castle and you go your way, uh, make your way over to the other towers and you can see the doors are still shut. Um, any remarks from math, from uh, Thonk to why about this? Uh, uh, no, just like I want to open just, the doors. You got so you kind of make your way over to the first door. Um, it shut, you know, kind of knock it open, whatever you got to do. Uh, open it up, you can see the tower goes both up and down, but there's only one direction you care about. Yep, I just immediately walk downward, and I'm assuming it'll probably click in Rise mind at this point, like what's going on. Well, the Rise is a little dull, isn't she? <laughs> no, Rise. <laughs> Rice sees the the identical architecture, and it kind of like clicks in her mind. But she realizes Thunk has known this for a while, otherwise it would fucking be there. And so, like, she embarrassingly just shuts up and follows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys uh, make your way to uh, d- down the down the stairs and um, uh, into that room. It's almost an identical room. Once again, ruined stuff. Blah blah blah. You make your way over and you go grab the identical sconce. And you go and you pull, oh, that one doesn't work. But after a couple moments of trial and error, you quickly find which sconce it is. And you pull and it's like, click. After 10, 12 seconds, click, 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 click. I nod at that and I look I look to, to Rai. The other tower is going to have the same. We need three hands or three people. Eh, three hands works too. Oh, if only you still had <laughs> three, three people. Smith, Smith. has three people too. If only Smith was alive. <laughs> I don't care if he's dead, oh. man. Oh snap! You right, right, right has an idea, and she's like, "What if we just hang something on it?" That'll work. But we will have to separate. Uh, you and I will have to separate for the other two, and then we're gonna have to go into the cave and deal with our friends. And it's like thick sarcasm in that word. Ry like kind of interjects. She's like, you just "Throw us off if they're still in the cave." We've nothing. Thonk nods to that. Okay, so we hang like something on here and then we run to the other ones and then where should i meet you um where would be a good meeting point like scott but between the towers you guys originally because like uh, it's almost equidistant for you guys to meet in that front room where you're originally trying to rest before your rest got interrupted all right so uh yeah that's fine uh, i'll stay here we'll say like yeah in the foyer i guess of the castle um so I'll... You're hanging something from this one is rye going to go to the second tower and you're going to go to the original one mathis yeah. Yeah, it'll work. What can we hang from this one, though? Do we have anything to hang from it? There's debris around it and whatnot, and I imagine some We can make work. something. Cause, cause like, as it, because of the shipwreck, you lost most of your basic adventuring gear. However, okay. you're able to hold on to your pertinent stuff that you always have on your person. So um, so you would have, between the two of you, enough of blood. Okay, enough, whatever. Tap. Yep, that'll work. Mm-hmm. Okay. And So you do that, you hang something on it, you guys walk the out. Nug. The uh, I'll look to you, uh, Rye. Go invisible. If they get me, you'll be the only one. I don't think I can use 
use it anymore. I'm gonna be honest. No, that, that I mean, I'm out of spells too. I understand that. So uh, I'll nod to that and just uh, kind of just split and we'll go our separate ways. Okay, so Rai, you've only cast one spell since your last short rest, correct? What was the second one? Hellish Rebuke, I used that, a second that, level slot. That's a racial level ability. That's right, a racial ability. Isn't it if you use a second level slot to do the extra 1d6, right? No, it, it is cast, it's a racial level ability, it's a racial ability that's cast as a second level slot. Yeah, but he uh. used an extra 1d6. Uh, yeah, 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 that, that's the uh, innate ability of a Typhling. Oh. Yeah, okay. maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. I'm, I'm gonna double check right now, but I'm... It says at higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot of second level or higher, it does extra 1d6. So in my, so in my mind, I used up my two second oh, levels. You can cast it as a spell slot. Wait, wait. Uh, you know Thaumaturgy, when you reach third level, you can cast Hellish Rebuke as a second level spell with this trait and regain the ability once you finish a long rest. When you reach fifth level, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't expend a slot to, to do that unless you're seeing it from somewhere different than where I am. Oh, okay. I'm actually on roll 20 because they have a pretty good source uh, uh, on there. All right, cool. Yeah, so you actually did not expend the slot. You've only used your invisibility, All which right. is awesome. And uh, back to Maggie. I know sometimes I pronounce things a little funny, but it's T-I-E is the spelling. Like Thai, like, hey, I'm getting dressed up. I'm putting on my suit. Hey. Well, I just if get it for free once German, per long The list. second one is usually how you pronounce it. So. All right, sounds good. Um, so yeah, yeah. So you do have another invisibility. That I, I would probably say that you probably still say that to Thunk just in case he gets enchanted. Yeah. I just um, nod. I just nod to him when he says it. Yep. Oh. And um, and you make your your way into the other tower. He makes his way down into the basement, and you guys go and pull your respective uh, levers. Clunk. Um, we can say even Rye pulls hers first, uh, a little bit closer and um, a little bit quicker, and then Thunk makes his way over and pulls his. Pan the camera back over. Uh, you finished casting your uh, ritual, and yeah, Grumman, Grumman's like as he's carving it, and the and the and the seagulls taking form. Um, you can kind of see the little wooden thing starting to glow, and it has like this kind of blue glow, like the water is reflecting on it, and it kind of has a blue glow around it, and it's complete. And when it's complete, Grumman looks at her and says, "Now," and he's smiling, and he looks at Otto. Everyone. Everyone. Oh my God. Grumman is, is able to call to the seagulls and have the seagulls even come over to him. Um, yeah, Grumman calls to the eagles and they all surround him and they're like coming around. A couple of them are like sitting on his arm and he's like looking at them. And he, um, uh, he looks at them, he looks at one of, or two of them and he goes, find them. Um, as you say that, um, as you say to them, find them, which is exactly what, um, perfect. Uh, as you say that, she leaves. I I know where you're going with this. Of course. Uh, she leans and says, um, make sure you're watching. Uh, Grauman stops for a moment and you see his eyes roll back. He's still walking forward with everybody, but he's holding like the seagull. And I guess, I'm guessing she's kind of guiding him so he, he doesn't walk into stuff. And mm -hmm. he's holding it and still Guiding walking his and his eyes are just like, all you see is white. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> Uh, that's the Otto has never seen that before, but Grauman sees so much more than he ever has before. Uh, seagulls don't just see in the same uh, types of color that that humans do. Seagulls have a certain level of um, of infravision as well. They have a certain level of being able to see hot things and cold things. So immediately as that seagull takes off and swoops around, this is Grauman's first time ever doing this. You can see the warmth of Grauman's like big muscular pulsing body with all these huge veins and tons of blood just flowing through and the warmth off of Otto. But you also see that this lithe, gorgeous creature that you're so in love with, she's so cool, you know what I mean? She's almost, uh, she's barely warmer than the temperature of everything that's around her. Uh, and and that, just, that just makes her that much more beautiful. And you can, uh, and uh, seagulls uh, start swooping off and uh, flying over towards the castle, trying to find where everybody else is. Now, you guys go into your respective areas, go down, pull your levers, and in doing so, <clears throat> thunk. Roll me a perception check. Now, mind you, your passive perception is pretty impressive. I think your passive perception is a... 13. Uh, no, 18. Oh, it went up? Yes, because of your uh, uh, spear and tattoo. Yeah, and, uh, oh, well, I can't click on passive perception, so I can't... I mean, passive wisdom, so I can't change it. It says 13 on my character sheet. No, 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 you're fine. Um, and you have... Uh, you can roll a perception check, though. Okay. Perception... Nat 20. 
Perfect. Crit. So you, all of a sudden, as you pull your lever, so he pulls his and you're waiting, right? And then you pull um, uh, your lever, you pull it, and a moment later, you can feel grinding of stone. But it's not like grinding of stone from somewhere far away. It's grinding of stone from somewhere nearby. Do I know it's where? Over, it's, it's obviously over your head, but somewhere within the castle. Oh, in the castle itself? Mm -hmm. All right, then I'm going to start, like, very quickly scouring the castle as fast as well, I can. Do you want to meet with Rai over that foyer area first? Since that's pretty much what branches off into it. So in, yeah, uh, yeah, that's Rai? that's. Uh, I will wait for Rai. I will wait for Rai in a doorway somewhere, not standing out in the middle of yeah, the yeah, foyer. Yeah. Yep. So so you're well. The the foyer is safe, anyways. It's not like it's out in the um. Still, area like if if they are even coming into the castle, I want to see them coming before they see me. Awesome. Like if so they Rai show Rai is visible and visible to Grommin, who sees yeah. uh, Rai. Okay a bird's eye view, sees Rai rushing from one of the towers over into the castle itself. It the and Rai, the Rai's, castle? Like, Rai's like fucking quick. Like, you haven't really seen Rai, like, run, run. Because last time she ran like this, she was getting chased by that guy. But, like, okay. she's 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 nimble. Like, okay. She's, like, um, almost horizontal, you can, like, see her tail. She's just, like, booking it. Okay. Um, I'm, like, for a moment I come back, and I'm, like, I found Rai. And I smile, and I keep the <laughs> smile, and the smile gets bigger. She's going fast. <laughs> Her ride. She fast. heads towards big castle. Mm -hmm. And then huh. I go back, and I keep, and I like my eyes roll back, and I keep walking forward with the with the seagull. Um, and the seagull itself, who knows to look for these people. Um, so the seagull itself uh, is is kind of swooping around a bit more. It does not know to like go into the castle or anything like that. But it, it is going to continue swooping the perimeter of the castle to see if anything else is visible at this point. As you guys continue making your way in, the two of you are in the foyer. Rai comes rushing in and uh, meets up with Thonk, who is actually already there because it was a shorter walk at this point. But that's fine. Um, is, is standing there, and um, you guys say anything or just. Uh, I'll just say that way. You think you're going that way? Yeah, I'll just, just say something opened up, and then just start moving. I'll pull right, like, for you. From, right from him, she's like doubled over, like hands on her knees, and you just see her like throw up like one thumb, and then she like <laughs> just, like light jogs into like the nearby room, um, and I guess you like go upstairs. Yeah, I just going to look where I think wherever I think the grinding went came from. That that's the direction I'm gonna go. Hey, you think it's gonna be on the first floor, not second, third, or fourth floor? You know what I mean? So okay. You think on the first floor. Oh, so we so should just like we just go. Yes, yeah, spread and fan. Awesome. So Rai immediately starts checking out all these rooms in the foyer area. Thonk will move forward. Uh, Thonk goes into the large area where that chamber is, the huge chamber that has like the windows around it, where it has like the perpendicular table with the two parallel tables, um, uh, where it's clear like a, a leader with all of his subjects or whatever. Um, searching around there, searching all of that, flipping over the chair, searching under the tables, looking everywhere he can. Rai has a much smaller area to search through. Eventually, she comes bursting back into the doorway as Thonk's dissatisfied. He hasn't found anything yet. Both of you kind of like look towards that that same doorway around the same time. That, uh, that at the end of the short hallway, the one that had the chamber in it that seemed like it was a uh, religious area, like a, a temple yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. You guys go walking in there, and you can see that um, the red carpet is no longer sitting, uh, or the old rotted, formerly red carpet is no longer sitting. It's now drooping at some points. And uh, going over and grabbing the carpet and ripping it with all of your might, this being thonk, ripping it with all your might, you're able to collapse over the podium, it cracking and breaking on the ground, being so corroded and old. And underneath, you see a stairwell has opened up. There was uh, some of that was across the stairs, opened up, and you can uh, go back down. Just go. Just no, not even a hesitation. Go. Um, so... You guys, um, uh, you guys immediately start running down the stairs uh, as quickly as you can. Um, thunk. Rai wants to pull the carpet like back over as we go down too. Um, so you what? You pull the carpet back over, just kind of yeah. like sloppily back over. Yeah, as yeah, just as like possible. sloppily back over. Perfect, thank you. And so you go running down there as uh, as quick as you can, rushing down. One of the things that Thonk notices, even in his haste, Thonk just uh, absorbs details around him. Mm -hmm. He notices. This area down here seems relatively clean. There's no dust here. Like, it hasn't been traversed before. It seems like many times this, uh, this has been traversed. And you go uh, down to the bottom of the stairs, and at the bottom there's actually a door that's in good shape. Okay. And it's shut. Just go up to uh, it. The two of you finally make your way to the castle with your 
with your true love. You're standing outside the portcullis. And, and um, <laughs> everyone. Um, <laughs> uh, no, they're standing outside the portcullis, and you can see yourselves from overhead from the bird's eye view, Graman, uh, seeing this. And then you also see her reach towards you uh, with the bird's eye view, and you can already feel your body tingling and your muscles tensing before her fingertips even, uh, even caress you. Um, and he loves me. He <laughs> touched me. She, she caresses me. down this, uh, the side of like, your, your tricep and that she's standing there. And she says, come back to me, my love. Come back to me. I do. I, I, I like flex as so she's touching me. So, <laughs> this is like a natural to, reaction. To like, yeah, to go up a little bit. I'm like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> Extra, extra. It's like bonking somebody's like knee and it kicks. You just touch <laughs> Gramman's muscle and he's just like, yeah. <laughs> Well, it's you want like, to feel. Uh, <laughs> and, he, and he like is hold, he's holding the the bird and uh, he's flexing. And all of a sudden he comes back and his eyes come back. The um, he like crushes the seagull and it just breaks into pieces. And uh, the seagulls around just like kind of like realize that they're they're like, what the hell am I doing? And then they go back to like their normal lives the and seagulls uh, yeah i just i just look at otto and look at her and i smile and i said everyone <laughs> i'm just going with it because the chat is just freaking spamming it's, <laughs> it's great awesome. no it's great it's <laughs> awesome okay so so um and with that she just kind of like uh gives the two of you we're talking like a tenth of a pound of pressure the ever so slightest push forward and the two of you can just feel emboldened by that to go and you know what to do Raman uh, takes his axe out, has it hanging on the ground, and runs through the door and just pushes the door open, even with the axe and doesn't even try to open the door, just runs right into it to open the door. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Man, I, I totally wish I had taken Gromman's axe instead of your damn loot. <laughs> yeah, I was actually surprised because Gromman dropped his. I literally. Yeah, dropped I know. My axe I know, I know. In air, dropped my axe. I, I thought was you more... were. Gonna take... I kind of was hoping you would because I knew what was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a hurry to get the fuck out. Oh man. Okay, so you uh, you guys Wait, are now standing music? before the store. Play some loot music for us. Well, he can like charm the shit out of us and make you invincible. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think he, I think his whole idea is if I have any chance against Grom and I need to uh, not have auto assisting him. Um. So, uh, the two of you are standing before this door that's actually in really good shape. Um. Uh. While you're standing there, could you auto only roll me a perception check? Mm-hmm. Oh, someone. Yes. I do have two axes. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Of course. Yeah, you. right. <laughs> so, so you uh, only you thog here uh, in the distance, but up above, above the stairwell, a crashing of the door coming open, uh, a signature move. Uh, I just I lean like real close to ride. It's like they're here. I just nods. Just go go open that door. Just yeah, do it. we just like lean on the lean on the door. Door's locked. Oh no. <laughs> I like this long quiet pause. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like shoves Thonk to the side and like drops on one knee and immediately just oh, starts. Fine. I, uh, I, I'm gonna stand a good five feet from you facing the stairwell. Okay. Beautiful. I just looked in chat. <laughs> I told you, they're all about this. It's creepy as hell. <laughs> Whoever started that, thank you. Oh my God, it's amazing. I got a 19, by the way. Thank you, oh, I'm sorry, I was yes. distracted. See, chat's minutes. distracting, Scott, get out. <laughs> oh, I'm back out again. It was literally the first time I looked. <laughs> Maggie prompted me. Thank you, Maggie, I appreciate that. I'm sorry, okay, so but it's just too good. They're doing like, give me energy, take energy, and it's just that everyone is awesome. You're, you're, you're down there, you're, please and uh it doesn't work with a 19 does not work does not that's i just you only rolled a 10 with that man go roll, roll again oh uh, god damn it keep, one second please. keep going we can't be here as forever help. <laughs> help okay so i'm sorry yep go ahead i, I already rolled yep yep, yep. that 17 definitely does not do it God. Was, inspiration, was. man. Use your inspiration. Everyone. All right. I'll use inspiration. Everyone. Okay, before you roll your 
Oh, oh wait. Well, hang on. And inspiration, my man. I forgot. To, I did. I just forgot to advantage. Okay. Before you, before you roll your advantage, because okay. we'll just say four failures, and then finally, like, okay. And then you, you go for it. So before we get to that, panning back to the other two, the two of you are both going to start immediately searching around looking for them. Now, uh, you know that Rye is uh, one of your focuses, and that um, Falk is another one of your focuses. Who would want to go for who? Oh, Ramen is not very smart, so he's not going to, like, delegate, if that's what you're trying to say. Ramen's goal is going to be to smash everything until he finds them. I know it's still uh, out for Rai's blood, so. So you know where Rai spent most of her time before, once you put two and two together with the illusion and the trickery that she was using against you in the uh, the basement? Is that immediately where you head? Sure, yeah. Okay. And then uh, Thonk is probably going to um, check those first two rooms that maybe run up the first flight of stairs, or where does Thonk go look? Thonk? I'm no. Thonk. I mean Grauman. I mean yeah. Grauman. All uh, half-orcs, they look alike. <laughs> again, like I said, Grauman's not the brightest, so he's literally just going to smash everything until he finds them. Like Awesome. So uh, auto Every door is going to be gone that isn't already gone. Otto goes rushing into that room, like I mentioned, down the hallway, down the stairs, him being the first one to ever found that room. He goes rushing down there, and he uh, pushes open, kicks open the door, and he's like, ha! Ah, oh, shit, they're not here. Ooh, my stuff. And he picks up his loot and his dagger uh, off of the ground over there. Oh, hey, man, I threw the dagger randomly, remember? Yes. Um, he takes him a moment to find the, the Just dagger. buy me time, man. That's all I care. Takes a moment to buy. Yeah, that's the one you're scared of. Um, <laughs> one of the things that you do see is you, like, oh, fuck, I got my dagger. Sweet. Oh man, uh, the the loot has scratches and scuff marks. Oh, <laughs> I just got it fixed. Hummed it on the ground. Come on. Oh yeah, yeah. It was yep, so yep, expensive, and then they had to steal the money back. It was a big long comb. <laughs> hey, all you feel is all you feel is happiness right now. Okay. That's true. Yeah, no, I am. <laughs> You're just happy to see it. it. Yeah, I can fix this. Um, <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Grumman is smashing through those first two rooms and making his way um, over. Uh, towards the big chamber room. Sorry, it's not by your time there, Mathis. Over towards this... the big chamber room where all the big tables how... are, the long tables, one that's right outside the room where the yeah. carpet was. How, uh, the, the hallway we're in is narrow, right? The Me initial and... hallway you walked in was short. No, no, the one we're in right now with the stairs leading oh, to the door. It's literally... narrow, yes. It's mm -hmm. like a, what, five foot narrow kind of thing? Uh, even narrower than that, but Good. don't worry, you can be a couple steps up and squat it down and not be hitting the carpet overhead. You, you Good. obviously... What um, Rye's plan was. Rye, now, please, Rye, roll me that. With um, advantage, with advantage. <laughs> with your advantage. Come on, Rye, come on. Yes! That's good. Yes! I'm assuming it was like a 25 would be my guess. Um, It actually was, in fact, a 25. It was a very difficult roll, yeah, something that most feeling. people couldn't achieve. And so finally, you pick the lock and the door, uh, the door unlocks, and you're like, Go, just go. <laughs> I just grabbed, I, I just like wave at Thunk and I'm like, come on. And yep. I just kind of like Jimmy into You guys go bursting into this room. This I room would, is very. Immediately though, my, my gut reaction after he, she goes through and I go through, turn around, shut the door and lock it. Okay. Turn around, shut the door and you lock it and you immediately turn back around. What do you see in front of you? You see. Another circular room. Resident Evil 7. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's what I feel like is happening right now. Long, dark hallway, and you hear... Uh, no. Nah, Resident Evil 7. You, nah, no zombies. <laughs> you, you, you see a, um, uh, another circular room uh, that you're standing in. This one about the same size as the, the one that, was, that you guys were pulling the levers in. Uh, on either side of this room is a sconce, and the sconce is a, um, a, is a torch that is uh, burning without smoke it is burning and it's giving off nice light almost immediately the two of you are able to realize yeah. that these were uh, illusionary um uh, it's an illusionary effect that that's making these torches burn forever and it's giving off this light and on the opposite side of you there is a door that is shut and off to one of the sides there is a single table that's set up there's nothing really on the table but looking around again funk and instantly look around it's kind of like taking in this place seeing the light seeing the the door uh, all that rye sees, but Thon can see that this room is clean. There is uh, no dust inside this room. Okay. Uh, so it's just a room with sconces, a table, and a door. If I pull on a sconce, does it come down? The sconces uh, are fake, I think. Oh, I thought the light was just like an ever-burning like spell. Correct, Correct yeah. Mathis. 
So right, if right. I pull on the sconce real quick, nothing? Nothing, you run over to the other one, pull it real quick. Yeah, nothing. just want to double check. As and then I go to the table. I feel around. Is there anything invisible on it that I would... Door unlocked? Nothing. You reach over to the door, you pull it open. It's open? Oh, wow. All right. So, so you, you jiggle the handle, you don't see any locks on it, you jiggle the handle, the handle jiggles? I, I will I will I will take the if this if it's fucking trapped it's fucking no, trapped. Right, right pulls Thunk back, and um, I, and she just like reaches out and she just unlocks the door with her mind and swings it open. Can, you have thaumaturgy, right? Mm -hmm. I do too. Is can it do that? I didn't even know that. Yeah, you open <laughs> unlocked doors. Do any like like little thing, pretty much like. Opening I guess I'm thinking door. of like invisible yeah. hand from three point five or whatever. Yeah, well, no, three point so, five is a spell called uh, open close specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Okay, cool. And there is a, there is another hand that you can only you couldn't do that with. It's mm -hmm. like yeah. Okay, cool. That works. So, oops. So you you have the door swing open using thaumaturgy. Yeah. And um, so it swings open, and on the other side of it, you find uh, a brick wall that's matching the perfect pattern of all the wall that's around you. I see brick. I'm sorry, stone wall that matches the pattern all around you. My gut. It's, it's my gut says uh, illusion. I go to interact with it. Yeah. Okay. So you go over and you immediately start touching it and you feel that it's a it's a stone wall. Oh, fuck. You spend a little bit more time kind of interacting yeah. with it. And you realize once you put like significant force onto it, you feel your hands pass through. Uh, okay, that's what I was looking for. Alright, and so you'll just see you'll see the stonk just push through it. No, what I'll right. do. No, what I'll do is I'll take Rai, and I'm going to push you through first. I want to stay behind. I want you to go in through first. Okay. Not yeah. for damage reasons, but I, I, you, this is this is for you, man, not for me. Like, I need you need to for go. For your safety. Yeah, I got yeah. it. So you okay. take Rai, and you push Rai through. We're going to hold the camera off of Rai for a minute, and we're going to keep it on Thunk. Yeah. Um, Thunk. So you push Rai through. She's completely gone. Mm-hmm. Uh, around this time, you hear the smashing upstairs inside that, that – uh, potential dining room, meeting room, whatever it was, is done smashing. And Brahmin eventually finds his way into that the area yeah. where there's a whole bunch of like uh, the three pews, there's yeah. a built uh, case over there, there's the shattered, what's it called? So Brahmin immediately walks in and starts like kicking over pews and looking around and sees the carpet. Brahmin, you see the, the, the podium is knocked over. It wasn't knocked over before. The carpet is always skew. Do you like go to try to check out the podium or something? I know, knock that over. <laughs> he goes over and looks at looks at it. As he's walking over, he goes to step on the uh, carpet. However, there is no support. <laughs> she falls carpet. through. Hold on. Ramen has trap sense. Ramen, can you please roll me a reflex save? But you get your bonus for your trap sense. All right, a reflex. I don't know where that is exactly on my sheet. I say, also, I'm sorry, dexterity save. I'm so dumb. I just keep using. You're using 3.5-isms. My, my, my apologies. Okay, let's do some dex. And your actual ability called a danger sense gives you advantage on your dex save, just to get away. Yeah. I have like, yeah. Oh, you rolled. Okay, I yeah. see. And the 10 is actually fine. That's all I wanted. So you go to step and all of a sudden you, you, you start like kind of uh, uh, slipping into it and use your axe to like stabilize yourself. You pull yourself back up. You're like, huh, my foot went through the, through the carpet, more or less. My what? Your foot like went, your foot was on the carpet when like through the floor you noticed. Hmm. But you obviously I see the Move my other hand and I like move the carpet pull it out of the way, and you see that there's now a revealed staircase underneath it. Ooh, staircase. Uh, around when you're finally, because you took a while smashing stuff, when you're finding the staircase, uh, looking around, just following a path of destruction, Otto finds his way up and into the rooms that were destroyed, and then over into the big chamber, um, the one that you had just destroyed prior with the long tables, uh, looking around and, oh, oh. And um, you making your way through it, and you hear Grommin like kind of saying something. And I assume Grommin walks down the stairs. Yeah, Grommin walks down the stairs. Grommin walks down them, sees that there's a door between him and his destination. He smashes it. Um, this is gonna take a little while. Can you do me a favor? Roll me a strength check. All right. I hope I. 
Oh, Beautiful. No. So I, I'm assuming I hear the first boom. Yep. Right, I'm going to try and push my way through the brick wall. Unless it only allows one person. Um, so you, uh, you leave, like, uh, the doors open, you go to the brick wall and you start trying to push your way through it. Yeah. Okay. So, yep. You push your way through that brick wall. And I will shut the door behind me. I like see Stonk's hands go through first and she like grabs one and she's like pulling on it. (laughs) Let's pan over to, uh, to Otto real quick. It takes two seconds, man. I go through the wall and I shut the door. (laughs) Let's go to Rai real quick. Rai, you had stepped through the wall and time had passed. So immediately once you step through the wall, you step through it and, oh, oh that's cold. You are standing on the side of a mountain and uh, or at least a very rocky, cliffy area. And the winds that blew past you is freezing. There's even snow on the ground. This is absolutely ridiculous. As soon as that wind blows past you and, and it gives you a bit of a shudder, you instinctively grab at this extremely warm cloak that you bought and you pull it around you and you snuggle into it and, and, and you start feeling much warmer. Uh, looking around and taking your surroundings, you're not just outside. You're outside in, in a large land mass area islands not island who knows but you see a mountain off into the distance over there you see that you're, you're in the, kind of like a rocky terrain where you are now there's fresh snow on the ground but not too big only like four or five inches deep or so um and uh and you're just kind of look, looking around for a moment uh, taking in these surroundings overhead there's like a a clear blue sky, only a few wisps of clouds here and there. Uh, as you're trying to like absorb this and process, like where the hell am I turning around and not seeing any wall or door or anything anywhere behind you. You're just like, uh, I'm standing out in the middle of the open now. Um, another blast of cold winds comes rushing by. And you're like, ooh, it's a good thing I have this cloak on to keep me warm. And and then you hear like a strange noise, almost like a <laughs> kind of noises and you kind of like making your way over and looking down um you see off the side of like the little cliff area where you're standing there's a, kind of a scene of carnage below uh there was a wagon that was traveling along a, we're gonna say trail um though it's not a very um well formed or comfortable one uh the horses that were part of the wagon either are are uh with snapped necks or heads shattered in with rocks lying by their sides splattered with blood anybody that was in the wagon has either been uh dismembered or or uh just completely crushed um you see that there are three large forms down there um two of them are very obviously you've never seen them before but you've heard many descriptions because they exist in thesk but um, two heel giants that are down there. Um, oh, one damn. of them picking up uh, part of a, a horse and just biting off a huge chunk of meat from its leg. And then you see another form that's uh, down there with them, kind of like uh, pointing at something and grunting in a language that you can't understand. But this form looks like a human. Um, I say it looks like a human because unless you were mistaken, it's a human. But you've never seen an eight foot human before. It's exactly like a human, but you've never seen an eight for a human before, um, covered in like furs and whatnot. And all three of them are down there kind of like looking through the wreckage, one of them eating a dead horse, the other two kind of looking through the wreckage of this, this caravan that they probably just waylaid and, and uh, kind of searching for valuables or whatever it is they're interested in. As you're kind of taking in the scene and probably like, ah, shit, and kind of like edging back over towards the... Uh, the the the, a rock to kind of give like a a break the line of sight between the two of you taking a moment to gather yourself you see a hand pushing through another one behind it and as you said you reach forward to grab those arms and you pull thong towards you because really happy to see him right now (laughs) Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i'm gonna try and shut the door as i'm going you know what i mean you did that you reach behind grab the door as you go and push yourself through Uh, the door snaps shut um, you're making a lot of noise, Maggie, but please roll me a perception check anyways, uh, with a disadvantage, please. Uh, you pull the door behind you and you land on the ground. Wait, disadvantage, why? Uh, because you're smashing at the door in front of you, so there's lots of, like, sound that you're making yourself. As soon as I see Thunk's face, he sees me and I'm just going, like this. And Thunk, as you're seeing that, and you're very quick to react to things, you're, you're intelligent, you're quick to react to things, so on. Um, you you feel a huge blast of cold winds come uh, rushing by and, and she once again snuggles up into her blanket. She doesn't seem that affected by it, but oh man, you were shirtless uh, out in this very cold area with this very cold weather. You were literally topless. 
Uh, Hell yeah, I am. My nips are rock hard. Cut diamonds with that shit. Freaking diamonds. Exactly. I had to, like, be careful of when I was pulling you through. Yeah, you don't want to cut yourself. That shit's sharp. Let me see that stolen short sword there. Uh, I want to I want to carve some sigils. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so anyways, and that immediately happens. You're processing that. Pan the camera back over to Maggie because she's the more interesting one at the moment. Maggie, you don't notice that the door shutting on the other side of the door. Okay. Um, continue bra- bashing, please. All right. Uh, Otto, you bashing. know where that sound is coming from. You go to it. All right. Another strength check. Please. Thank you. All right, not at a disadvantage. That would suck. Sorry, I have to unclick it and scroll. You're probably still rolling actual 20. Monitor is so tiny. All right. Double 20s. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Come on. Has Adam's piggy Wait. Head up? What? Yeah. No. You grommeted. No. You grommeted. You pulled a grommet. Grommeted. Okay. So, as Adam is, um, walking around the corner and making his way in, just kind of looking down and seeing that you hit this door two or three times and uh, probably get ready to say some sort of little quip, like, oh, I need a hand with that, or- um, Everyone. <laughs> so as he's thinking to say some little quip, all of a sudden you're just like, ah! And you grab your ax, you sh- uh, hit it once, and ah! you reach back and you kick into the, the, the handle of the ax right by the head with so much force, you literally use that to split the door open. Half the door is still on the hinges and swinging. The other half has flown across the room uh, on the other side. And it's just like uh, uh, flopping around on the ground, sliding to a stop. And it ah, reached out and pick up your ax. And you look across the room and you see, as I had described before, sconces, light, um, table, and another door in front of you that is shut. Okay. I oh. see the other door. I drag my ax and I book it towards the door to smash the next door. Otto, you, uh, I assume, make your way down the stairs? Yeah. Just nice and casually. Push the, the, the half the door. <laughs> He's like casually. casually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has their talents. Yeah, of course. Are you imagine much like a, uh, a saloon when you have the, the double doors and kind of like, you know, whatever, uh, with the force that she pushed the half still on the hinge with, it's still kind of bouncing back and forth a little bit as yeah. Otto goes down and just pushes it open. And he- Otto's like, he grabs and like moves it on its hinge a little bit, just kind of enjoying it and then keeps walking. He much more easily absorbs the surroundings uh, of what's going on inside that room. So again, sconces, table, door across the way. As you're absorbing these, um, you're about to be on par in a moment. Maggie, one more strength check for me and then you guys can Okay, let's go from a nat 20 to a nat 1. Ramen, ramen it's is weird funny. how these guys are just advancing like at twice the speed we are. I know, uh, right? <laughs> isn't that funny? When they have to discover where we are because we're hiding, but apparently they're finding it and breaking it and catching us up twice as fast. <laughs> and they're under some kind of spell that makes them thick as pig shit. So, <laughs> why are they catching us like this? We should be gone by now. <laughs> Except we know who the more capable people are. I rest my case, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Grauman, uh Gets an even bigger smile mid-running. Maggie, you're charging across the room while doing this. Can you roll the strength check with advantage? Thank you! Oh roll, my God. Second time. roll it with advantage, I was saying, because you had God your damn charging. No, that roll counts. She's got to roll one more time, though. Yeah. That's the, there you go. So, it was Nate. Um, it was Nate. Run across the room. You smash the door. It does not open. We'll take it. Um, Grommet is going to... Otto, you I guess can color, I'm really happy, so I can't go enraged, huh? I wouldn't um, say you so. You are very happy, and your the love of your life is not currently in danger. Okay, so I guess I wouldn't go unarranged. Um, I don't walk. No, I'm disappointed like... in the fact that I couldn't open the door. I guess I'm gonna go back to the other side and run again. Okay. Otto, as she's Otto comes up, and as she's as, as he's going back to charge again, he says, "Oh, hold on, did you did you open it?" And he just goes up and tries to open it. Grumman looks at him. He goes. No. <laughs> so funny, if you let Grommin run and you opened it as Grommin was running. <laughs> oh my god, it is so good. Into the hill giants. Well Yeah, just straight off the cliff into the hill giants. <laughs> okay. So uh you go over it and you open the door and Oh, I thought, I thought it was one more strength check. When the, do- when the door opens, opens Grommin's like oh. Grommin looks at and at Otto and goes, Oh, that easy. Yeah, it's a door. Everyone. Everyone. 
God, you sure you like don't want to let him through to catch us as well? So <laughs> we'll Should we just, you know, can you just have us <laughs> by the neck at this <laughs> point? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> so you open the door and you see it's a false door. There's nothing on the other side except brickwork. It's a false door. It's a joke. It's a gag. It's a, a practice door. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Practice for smashing. So I walk in. I look around for a second. Oh, they're, they're not in here. Grumman, like, looks in. What does he see? The same thing? Nothing? It's a brick wall. Just a brick wall? Grumman's gonna knock on the wall. Um, okay, so Grumman goes over, and just with a simple knock on the wall, you actually, you know, knock on the wall. You feel the wall. It wall. Good. Good to know. Okay. Um, let's... Let's let's go look somewhere else. Grumman smiles and says, "Yes, somewhere else." To find them. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> so Good as God. you guys are saying that, you're gonna turn <laughs> like Sam, Sam just is like, "Oh God, why am I?" <laughs> I'm just like every time you guys have a conversation, I'm like, "They're gonna end it with everyone," and then it just happens. And I'm just like, "Oh my God." <laughs> As you guys say, uh, uh, say that and turn back, we we see her standing there in the in the doorway, uh, looking down at you guys. Now she's looking at the the two of you with like a pout on her face, like with concern, as she's looking at the two of you, uh, kind of like happy at the moment, and then turning back and looking at her and seeing she's upset for some reason. But for you to find out what that reason is. Um, there is a lot of of chatter about maybe doing an extra. It's a bear. Are you good with doing next hour or no? Yeah. All right. Sure. So oh, <laughs> you say that with such break. twisted as arm. I know, right? Well, All right. Let me take one more hey, break. Beth, it's for everyone. 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 So everyone. as as a makeup for missing two weeks, we'll do one more hour. We'll wrap up whatever's going on here, and uh, we'll be back in just about five minutes. Thank you, Bear. We appreciate it. We'll be die. back. Yeah. We'll send you yeah. your coffee. What is the coffee that you that you need? Madrinas. Buy Madrinas with Bear's coupon code. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to hook you up, Bear, you know? Appreciate it. Madrinascoffee.com slash That's shop. It. Use code Bear Coffee to get 50% off. It's a real good, real good deal. It's real get good it. Coffee. Get that. Get it. Get it. It's real good. 50% off? Yeah, 5-0. I'm, I'm doing it right now. You should. It's good coffee, dude.